Hello, uh, today we talk about digital circuit, the basic stuff. Uh, previous video, we talk about where the digital circuit design is used in the LSI chip, various type of LSI chip uh, we introduced in previous video. Now today, very basic. Uh, the, the most important aspect of the digital circuit design is timing. Okay. And second is, of course, the logical design. But logical design, anybody can do it after you you finish the uh, electrical engineering or electronics uh, major. The a uh, little bit higher level of logical design is called algorithm. And algorithm is like uh, how you perform number A plus B, and there are many, many ways to do it. A times B. A divided by B. How do you do that in a binary? Okay. It's not just uh, one method. It's one method maybe introduced in the textbook, but uh, in the actual chip design, all kinds of different methods are used, depend on the needs of your design. And also, um, a lot of new development uh, existing in this field, the innovative method. For example, uh, ternary logic. Ternary logic require two bit for each one ternary bit. Th this is the cost of hardware, but hardware is getting cheap. So many chip design use ternary logic because spending more hardware, the calculation speed, the the is significantly improved. Okay. So at the cost of hardware, and the cost of hardware is getting lower and lower, the, the new type of algorithms developed to speed up. So timing, basic gate speed, is the basic performance measure. But not only that, algorithm. And also algorithm, the, there are different al uh, aspects, like uh, power. How do, do you... Uh, reduce the power consumption okay so these are the uh, basic logical designers uh, the skill skill that uh, the other designer need to learn the we are talking about basic or basic the timing we have three different type of digital circuit to consider. One is logic gate. And logic gate is something like uh, this kind of logic gate. A, B, C, D, and X. Now, timing A to X, B to X, those are listed in the logic uh, library. Each component has this one. And this timing is max, right? What is the meaning? Meaning it's zero, right, for the logic gate, because when you change high to low or low to high, how long it's going to take to change X, the output. And at least it, it takes some time. So it cannot be, you know, negative, right? You cannot change output before you change input. So minimum zero. So it's implied. So most of the logic library has only max. And now each input and output logically, it looks symmetric, but actually Inside the logic is different, so you have to look at all the words and pick the worst case. Pick the
because which input is going to change uh, at the time we don't know uh, so take the worst case and that's going to be the worst case logical gate delay time and if you have a logical gate cascaded then delay time will be worst case will be all added up here delay each delay time okay now next one is latch and flip flop and what kind of timing issue you have to be aware of and the latch is actually include RAM or ROM the memory is basically logically it's same as latch from timing viewpoint okay so let's look at the latch let's quickly create latch using no gate and you have a this come from here feedback and this goes here and this goes B and this is the Q and the Q bar right and if you write the logic A B Q Q bar when A and B are low then we don't know the state of this inside it's a previous state is preserved so memory functions memory function right so this is gonna be uh, suppose previous one is Q bar this is gonna be Q bar and Q bar low and when A goes high this is gonna force Q to be low and B stay low then um q bar is going to be high right and other way around a goes low b goes high then this reverse so what happens if both are high okay both are high then q is low q bar is low both are low okay so this state is used for set reset okay now set to reset this timing is very critical because when you remove signal uh, a it turn into zero and b into zero <coughs> which set is going to be a slight difference in the timing a and b determine this so if you make a high first right then q becomes low and one then later b goes high then this state is created this is reset so this is the reset so set is you bring b to high first okay so q bar become low and q become one then you set the b a high later okay so Oh. Um, wait a minute here it's wrong so a goes to both are high uh, a goes to low first so this is low q goes high this is opposite so this is this is set and reset okay so depend on 
which signal uh, change first function change set or reset okay now after changing set or reset what we do is in order to have a uh, data D come in and we want to have this guy follow the data right so to do that we have to make it opposite here right according to this table so there's no more latch function because this D is gonna come in low or high either way this is opposite so Q is going to be determined if D is low it's a high this low 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 is high Q is high so it's gonna be D Q is going to be opposite of D so no more latch no memory here but sometimes we use a circuit why because this going to change the waveform the waveform is sometimes D could be very uncertain D like that okay and a certain point it's going to switch this guy so output become very sharp okay so during this transition uh, many bad things happen okay so the Q the we can use this for uh, uh, reforming the wave the input signal into the sharp drop because of the feedback loop now how do we still keep this memory function so what we do is we put another gate here right and if this is both a low uh, and end gate end gate okay and this if this this is called enable enable is low then doesn't matter what the D is this stay low and zero zero means it's a memory function right so it's retained the uh, memory and when this goes to one then it start following D okay so this enable if enable come enable come high suddenly okay then that's a latch enable okay and the D have say value high okay so here output is gonna change immediately with a certain delay low right okay and enable goes away so even if D change doesn't matter it's retained a uh, high this this high right then output stay low even D change to low 
So here memory contents is retained. So we have to be careful here. <coughs> if D was low <coughs> and suddenly become high before enable, then it's acquire high. But uh, how much time it has to change the how much time prior to enable the D has to be high, okay? That is called uh, setup time. It has to be high before enable arrive. So this is uh, setup time. And if D change too early to low, what's happened? you're not sure whether it's capture high or miss it, right? So D has to be maintained to be high after enable come. And this time is called hold time. Okay. So you need to have a setup and a hold time to capture the D. And one more important thing is this latch, whenever input change, the output change immediately. Okay, suppose this change here, then certain delay time output change, right? And this one is delay time T from D to uh, Q. Actually, if uh, enable capture it, not enable capture it, if D change from change of the D to output change, change of the D to output change. Okay, so this timing should be listed in uh, if this is a D latch in the library D latch data, data enable Q and Q bar this timing should be listed together in the library so you have to look at this now setup time and the whole time and delay time delay time is after the change during uh, acquisition acquisition means enable is high when the change if the change in the middle of here acquisition time the uh, no once this this goes high this acquisition time the this is this is acquisition this period is a acquisition time right okay so actually let's let's make it this d has to be Oh, sorry this is negative negative edge acquisition so the D has to be high after this acquisition time finish that's the whole time and D has to be high before this not this rising edge just falling edge in this case this falling edge the you have a setup time and the whole time and once the acquisition time finish doesn't matter what the D change during this acquisition time if D change so from this D to Q change of the Q is the delay time okay let me repeat this this is acquisition time and end of acquisition time 
is a problem okay end of acquisition time the when how how when D has to correct the D data has to arrive before finishing acquisition and how long it has to retain the D after acquisitions finished okay so this is setup time whole time and whenever during acquisition during acquisition whenever D change then from that change to Q the output is delay time so this is like a when enable is on high then it's acquisition period acquisition period it's behave like a gates right just a logic gate and the logic gate has a delay time so during this time you can talk about delay time but acquiring a data the data has to arrive before this edge and data has to be kept valid after this edge so there is a setup time and the whole time okay if you violate this acquiring this data is not guaranteed so you have to know this timing number from the library and you have to pay attention to that okay now memory is large the large is one memory has many so what do you need address so you have to address to one of many is a memory pad I want this guy to read or write so memory you need to have the read cycle you need to have address valid and pointing a right cell right latch right and the memory enable uh, okay the usually memory is read read mode is address change then output change so this is gonna be delay time so this is like a logic gate no detention no retention of the memory the content data content uh, right cycle you have to have address settled and you have a enable signal going to the memory now usually most of memory RAM take enable on a negative so this is a rising edge right and you need the data data change around okay so memory has set up time the data has to be correct even before that address has to be correct so there there is an additional uh, specification for memory the after address data has to be varied then this data has to be varied before the enable acquisition goes up right so here data is retained this data is retained you need to have a setup and data change around after that but cannot change too fast you need a whole time okay and usually the RAM this whole time very small but the setup time is pretty good amount okay 
and this enable pulse has T W right pulse there is a specification for that too enable pulse has to be certain width okay and the data setup whole time so this is exactly the same as latch data acquisition acquisition right data acquiring process you need to have a setup time and the whole time and in this case since uh, most of the memory use uh, negative enable this rising edge here is going to be um, important now what happen if you cascade to latch d latch right and we use enable to this and opposite to this okay and the data q goes to data and this gonna be q2 q2 bar so it's funny things happen D during the data acquisition i told you that this d latch is just like a logic gate right so whatever data shows up here but it doesn't show up q2 because enable is negated when this is acquisition this is not acquisition so it's blocked data is blocked q2 doesn't change during acquisition right so the e goes goes low remember e e goes low right to acquire this one yeah okay then q come out but q2 stay same whatever the data right and when acquisitions for the first stage go away then second stage it's time for second stage to acquire so what's happened is q2 change after acquire data so again you need setup time and the whole time for the first acquisition this guy okay this guy acquire data but that is not transferred to q2 q2 is held up until opposite edge arrive okay so what's happened is we have just created the uh, uh, rising edge free prop and we write clock this way in this case e and when e is high Okay, nothing change. Let's go down. This is trailing edge free prop. 
goes down data get in free prop right wait a minute this is high e get low or oh, e get high output doesn't change at all until there is a rising a rising edge so this is positive rising edge free prop okay so clock goes like that the 50 percent duty cycle duty cycle enable signal right and here data it start acquiring a data okay the during this data is freely uh, acquired in in this latch and when clock goes up that data is transferred to the output is that correct because this goes yeah we have to use enable bar right so this is gonna be acquisition period and when this goes high acquired data is transferred to this guy okay so you have a data clock to q2 clock to q2 okay clock edge to q2 if signal this way okay so we can put this way the this become becomes acquisition period so the before rising edge last half of rising edge the free prop is taking data in okay and the rising edge is take data and the data is transferred to second one so this is a logic mode not the acquisition anymore okay this acquisition finished then this logic mode finished to acquisition mode so it's acquired new data so new data come out so again you need the acquisition setup and the whole time around this rising edge okay yep so why flip flop is important why you use flip flop not the latch let's think about this one suppose you have a random logic logic gate and go to free prop so it's called free prop to free prop operation and all the data operation in cpu is free prop to free prop operation okay so when you have clock going and the clock is synchronized okay so after clock rising edge in this case rising edge free prop right the the new data the data presented here come out okay and this goes through the logic modified d2 and arrival of this uh, rising clock 
it takes next this has a delay time so first clock h second clock h you see the new data coming out so this could be any logic like you know adding numbers whatever so it takes exactly one clock from clock edge to clock edge for the operation and that's need whole time and the random logic logic delay time and this is going to be setup time so whole time plus delay time plus setup time has to be within one clock okay so that's a that's a the normal logic operation the timing wise you need to have a whole time and logic delay time and the setup time for this flip prop and sometimes you have to be careful like flip prop goes flip prop directly and this delay time is smaller than whole time and that means when clock arrive this data change without holding enough time so this may fail to get the data from here okay in that case you have to insert some logic some dummy logic to give a delay and make sure it's hold enough time for this guy because clock is synchronized and plus clock skew what is a clock skew well here edge is here but this edge is actually a little bit delayed when you have millions of free prop okay then th the clock signal goes those millions of free prop the clock has to be distributed with many buffers and there is a variability of the delay time of the each buffers is accumulate then there is a certain clock skew exist okay so if clock skew add up to this whole time delay time and setup time then it has to be within one clock if it's operating one gigahertz right then what <sighs> one gigahertz is uh, uh, one nanosecond so uh, one microsecond right? one gigahertz Let's see, um, megahertz, no, one nanosecond. Within one nanosecond, everything has to be in one nanosecond. Now, the your EDS software probably calculate all kind of random logic free prop to free prop pass and it showed the longest pass like this one okay so this longest pass is called critical pass 
and that's determined the, the speed of clock and of course fast clock CPU is higher performance and you have to go back and check see if you can change logic around to reduce the pass delay time and pass delay time become critical that's why it's called critical path okay so after you design you still need to do optimization okay now you hear the term synchronous design and asynchronous design asynchronous okay when you use that in a software it's a different meaning the in software design synchronous design means like say you have add a and B then multiply the added result goes to A A C and this is a synchronous design because you have to finish this first before you do this but a synchronous design is add A and B and multiply C and D they are not related so you can execute this and execute this at any time okay that was software definition it's it's more like a sequential operation and non sequential operation but in hardware synchronous design means every flip flop acquire new data new data at edge okay a synchronous design means it may not if you mix latch and free flop you have to be very careful because latch enable is uh, enable edge and free flop uh, clock edge could be different latch doesn't have a clock free flop has a clock everybody operate in the clock edge is a synchronous design if you mix those for example the memory the memory is typically if you memory pad is outside of cpu typically takes many clock cycle like 10 15 clock cycle to get one data coming back so the it's become asynchronous so you have a this uh, synchronous and asynchronous part of the design and it's funny, the, the one time the uh, new graduate engineers, I asked to design the 4-bit counter. Just practice, right? Then he made it like, like this clock and output goes to the next clock. Output goes to the next clock. Output goes to the next clock. And this you can count, actually. Okay. The problem is, clock you take from data has a delay and have additional delay here. Okay. So at the end, say if you have a 32 bit CPU and you use 32-bit counter this way then from here to 32-bit end it's already more than one clock so you won't make it timing wise okay so what do you do you have 4-bit and synchronous design you have a single clock then this data goes to actually ALU but this ALU is just plus one logic right then output goes
go back to here. So what's happened is you have say zero one one zero. What the next counter you add one, it's going to be one 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 zero. And if you count one more up every clock, it's going to be zero 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 one. Okay. So you need external logic like that to make a sy synchronous design. Okay. Never use the data line for clock. This is no matter how carefully you design, it's going to make a mistake. Clock is clock, synchronized clock. Every every free flop operate except for latch. Latch get latch makes the design complicated. So the memory is latch, so the memory is a separate design. The memory interface actually you never know when the data come back from memory and you have to deal with that logically. So synchronous asynchronous the concept is very important. Okay, I think uh, very quickly we review the basic of digital circuit. Uh, important part of the digital circuit design is the timing issue. And you know the synchronous, asynchronous, and uh, data acquisition, edge, and setup time, hold time, and delay time. All the concept is very important. The Designing logic is not that really difficult. Beyond this, once you know the timing issue, then next video we get into the algorithm, how we perform uh, addition, multiplication, and others. And probably we, I made another video for ternary logic, but uh, we're going to cover that again because that's such important subject. The ternary logics makes the order arithmetic operation super fast. And if you know that, if you are using binary uh, logic to add a number or multiply or do whatever, then you are an you are, uh, out of date logic designer. Okay? So if you think this helps you this video helps you please subscribe okay see you next video